Hi, this is Dr. Jojo Kotur and today we will be learning about how to interpret a radiograph in an endodontic and restorative perspective. So let's begin this session with this beautiful statement said by Louis Grossman. He said that radiograph probably could be the most commonly used clinical tool for diagnosis. Now, can you imagine doing a diagnosis either in a respiratory point of view or an endodontic point of view without a good radiograph? I mean, the correct diagnosis. It is impossible for us to come into a correct diagnosis in both these areas without a radiograph. I had seen many dentists taking OPG to come into a restorative and endodontic diagnosis. Mark my word, this OPG, according to me, doesn't have any diagnostic value other than counting the number of teeth. So I don't recommend to take an OPG for coming into a correct diagnosis in a restorative and endodontic perspective. Instead, what we required is an IOPA or intraoperative periapical radiograph. So, is this an IOP radiograph? Look very carefully, the periapex is missing. So, we can't call it as an IOPA because if you want to call a radiograph an IOPA, it should show at least 5 mm of the periapex which is missing here and it doesn't have any diagnostic value because it will not show the periapex. In a restorative and anodontic point, what a clinician must see on a radiograph is the lamina dura and periodontal ligament space, which you can appreciate in this radiograph. If you look carefully here, you have a deep caries approaching the pulp space. So what determines the clinician to go for a vital pulp therapy here or an invasive procedural like root canal treatment. Obviously, clinical symptoms and sensibility test is a must. Now, other than that, we look for the lamina dura and the pedial ligament space. If the lamina dura is intact, which you can appreciate in this radiograph, this particular tooth can definitely go for a vital pulp therapy. Before going into the topic that is how to interpret a radiograph, let's briefly understand the radio opacity versus radio lucency of various restorative material to structure and beyond. Now on the top portion you have the most radio opaque material and as we, as we come down it becomes more radiolucent. So obviously it starts with metals, then we have the restorative materials, uh, the top one will be amalgam, then composites, uh, the conventional MTA, GIC and biodentine. I have to speak a little bit about GIC and biodentine because if you look very carefully the radio opacity of these two material is very much matching the dentine. So on a radiograph it is very difficult for us to pick up uh, GIC and biodentine. And as we come down from restorative material then we have enamel, dentine, cementum, cortical bone, trabecular bone, calculus and soft tissue. Well, with this information, let's move on to how to interpret the radiograph in a restorative and endodontic perspective. Now, let me make it once more very clear that we need an IOPA, which means at least 5 mm of the periapex should be visible on that radiograph. Now, once you got the correct IOPA, I generally start by identifying the culprit tooth. In this case, it is mandibular second molar. Then I divide that tooth into three portions. The crown, the root portion here and structures beyond the root. Now when it comes to the crown, I start 
looking from the enamel i look whether there is any discontinuity on enamel like decay or fracture or any such things after enamel i go to dentine then i come to the pulp space so i start from the outer portion and travel inside i will do the opposite way when it comes to the root i start from inside and then i go outside so i start looking or tracing the root canal i start tracing from the pulp chamber and i trace all the way to the tip of the root now once the root canal is been observed and traced then i look the dentine and after dentine i look on to the cementum now this is the order which we follow when it comes to the root structure that is we come from inside and travel outside on the contrary towards the crown you come from outside and you travel inside okay now once the crown and its root is been properly diagnosed then i look on to the structures beyond the root what are they we start with the pedial ligament the radiolucent line that you see beyond the root after the pedial ligament we look on to the most important anatomic structure in a restorative and anatomic perspective that is the lamina dura the white radial opaque structure just after the pedial ligament space now this is of clinical significance why because the moment we see a disruption or discontinuity in the lamina dura that means the root canal is infected and there is no way that we can save this particular tooth with a vital pulp therapy once the lamina dura is traced then i look on to the bone now this process have to be continued for all the roots in this case we have two roots if you have more you have to trace all these in the correct way for all the roots which is available for that particular tooth now in the bone what we look uh, we look for any radiolucency in the form of abscess or cyst we also look for anatomic structures like mandibular canal on a on a uh, lower molar when it comes to upper molar we look for maxillary sinus and we look for foramens like mental foramen or incisive foramen and uh, other anatomically important structures now this is how we interpret a radiograph so i had looked the concerned tooth and structures beyond it now don't forget to look the forcation area that is something that we generally miss it is of periodontal pers in a periodontal perspective it is of high clinical significance the the forcation and the bone loss the interdental bone loss should also be assessed correctly okay and that completes the diagnosis of the culprit tooth and uh, i highly recommend not to forget about the adjacent teeth also because sometimes the adjacent teeth will be the culprit and we generally overlook this tooth and uh, can go into a wrong diagnosis so this is how a radiograph is interpreted uh, uh correctly according to me uh we start from the crown then to the root then to the periapex and then structures beyond the periapex and finally we look on to the adjacent teeth what is the importance of radiograph because these radiograph will help us in diagnosis that is before the treatment it also help us during the treatment like working length or when you are doing a white up the therapy you had cut a little bit and we just want to assess how deep it is you can take an intra operative radiograph we take a post operative radiograph and we also take a full operative radiograph so 
Radiograph is used uh, pre-operatively, it is used intraoperatively, and it is used post-operatively also. Uh, here I'll be stressing a little bit about uh, uh, pre-operative radiograph, which is very important for us. Uh, you know why? Because it helps you to identify many things, especially in terms of endodontics. Number one, it helps us to identify the size and shape of the pulp chamber. Number two, it gives the direction and angulation of root canals, which is uh, important for us. Number three, it helps us to identify the curvature. Most importantly, it will help us to understand where exactly the curvature starts and what is the degree of curvature. Number four, it helps us to understand the length of the root canal. Number five, periapical pathology. Your treatment line changes, whether it is single sitting or multi sitting, or whether we need a periodontal opinion uh, is solely based upon the bone loss around the tooth. Number six, obstructions. Obstruction can be within the pulp chamber or probably within the root canal. So that is also of clinical significance. Number seven, root canal morphology. You can identify the number of roots, number of root canal, the splits, the complexity of root canals, and many more. Number eight, proximity to anatomic structures, which I had already mentioned. Number nine, angulation of tooth. Sometimes the tooth will be in a different angle. If you don't consider that angle, which is very difficult to pick it, uh, pick up on a clinical perspective, you may go wrong in the access opening. Number 10, narrow or wide root. Look at this tooth. Here you have a very narrow root. So uh, probably I will be using a lesser tapered instrument because uh, otherwise uh, if you use a 6 or 8 percent instrument here, there is a chance of a strip perforation. Number 11, maturation of apex. Sometimes you can end up in open apex in any permanent tooth or wherein you have a lot of root resorption and the uh, uh, treatment line changes there. Sometimes you need to go for an apexification or probably uh, with uh, gutta perca we can go for a roll cone technique or an inverted cone technique. So these can be, uh, these treatment plans can be identified uh, uh, with a good periapical radiograph. Let's also learn how to differentiate PDL ligament line and root canal line because both looks very much similar on a radiograph in the form of radiolucent line. Now this tooth is a maxillary first molar. Uh, towards the mesiobuccal root you can see two lines. Okay, Here I am tracing it for you. One line like this and you can see another line like this. Now which is a canal line and which is PDL ligament line or both are canal lines? Uh, that is a confusing question for many clinicians. So let me put it this way. Canal line always originate from the pulp chamber and it travels towards the root apex. Whereas this PDL ligament line will always originate from the uh, cemento enamel junction and it will not travel to the root apex instead it goes to one side of the root tip. So uh, coming back to the uh, picture you can now identify which is canal line and which is a pedial ligament line. Here this line which originate from the pulp chamber traveling to the apex is the canal line whereas the line which is originating from the uh, cemento enamel junction and is which is not traveling to the apex of the tooth is the pedial ligament line. So uh, have a clear idea about uh, this particular phenomenon which is most commonly seen in multi-rooted teeth. So with this you will understand how much time we, uh, we need to interpret a radiograph. I had seen many clinician uh, coming into a, a conclusion about their diagnosis with uh, five seconds. Uh, so that is not possible if you do in this way, manner. And this is how uh, we should uh, interpret a radiograph. And uh, 
definitely it will help you to do a better diagnosis. Once you get a better diagnosis, you get better treatment planning and definitely the outcome will be good. So uh, that's about uh, interpreting radiograph in an endodontic and respiratory perspective. Uh, let me know uh, your uh, thoughts about this presentation and uh, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment uh, uh, for this uh, YouTube video and I'll catch you all soon with uh, another presentation. Uh, bye for now.